Uh, joining us now is Vihan from the YouTube channel Mountain Road Rides. Uh, we're going to do a deep dive into the Mountain Road Rides video YouTube video channel. Welcome. It is great to have you here with us, Vihan. Hi, welcome. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to be on the podcast. Uh, I've been listening to a bunch of your episodes over the, the months and years. And uh, cool. so uh, I love it. <laughs> uh, where are you calling from tonight? So, yeah, I am based here in Northern Virginia um, in Great Falls. Um, and uh, I think you guys are familiar with the CNO Canal. You've written on that a oh, couple yeah. of times. I've seen those videos. And so uh, it goes through the Great Falls Park. Um, and we're just on the other side of the river. Instead of the Maryland side, we're on the Virginia side. So uh, okay. that park is not too far away from me. And uh, so it's uh, one of my favorite local stomping grounds where you can go and ride. So you've got <laughs> gravel bike. almost like instant access to really prime dirt. That's awesome. I think yeah that. so that that's that's i i know i'm pretty you know uh privileged to have that park so close by and then uh the the real area where you know you guys have also ridden there is uh Loudoun county gravel mm -hmm. um that is just uh, absolute gems that's about 40 minutes away and so uh whenever i get the opportunity i want to go out there i mean that is just absolute spectacular gravel riding yeah we 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 unfortunately don't have a lot of gravel right at our fingertips so uh <laughs> we're very jealous of those that do and 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 that's that's absolutely fantastic um to tell before we get into the youtube channel um introduce yourself to our listeners tell us a little bit about yourself yeah, thank you. Um, I mean, I think what I'm very impressed with is you got my name right. Um, <laughs> the pronunciation of my name. Um, that's always a, a, a thing that, that trip up people quite easily is the, the Vion name. Um, I do my so, homework. I do my homework. Yeah, I can I can tell. I mean, uh, so uh, yeah, I'm originally from South Africa. My native language is, is Afrikaans. And so the Vion is actually, it's a V sound, but it's spelled W-I-E-H-A-N. Um, and so, uh, yeah, originally from South Africa, grew up there, um, small town, just about an hour south of Johannesburg. Um, and I think that's where I sort of got my first real taste of, of open, wide open country roads mm. and the ability to go and explore with bike and uh, just ride my, my bike on, on both dirt and, you know, just paved roads as we had there in that area. And, uh, yeah, just... Uh, my background is uh, basically as a financial analyst. I've been trained in, in finance and throughout the years I've worked um, in investment banking and other financial positions. Um, but then uh, since moving to the U.S., um, well, actually, let me just say that as well. I, I met my wife, um, Kristen, who is from the U.S. And uh, so uh, that was about maybe nine years ago. Uh, we got married in 2014 and we lived there in South Africa for a while. And then uh, after a couple of years of living there, uh, we moved over to the U.S. to be closer to her family and everybody who's who's based here in, in Virginia. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, me in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> so this, so the YouTube channel is a bit of a creative outlet, I, I guess, and coming from that's, the financial analyst world. Uh, that's right. I, I like to think of, you know, exercising both sides of my brain. So, um, you know, <laughs> okay. the analytical side, that's where I get my numbers and fixes. And I think that's why I love nerding out on all the technical stuff of biking as well. You know, I can easily go into all the details of, you know, uh, the watts and calculations around bikeometry and all those sort of things, you know, the more nerdy stuff if you want to get into like spreadsheets i'm pretty good at designing spreadsheets so i can go and work out gear ratios yeah. to the t and and, and <laughs> you, know, you fit right you in with some of that. our listeners ted and, <laughs> yeah. and, and chris with their spreadsheet decision trees and yeah, I, i've yeah. been known to put together a spreadsheet or two from time to time <laughs> it's we get to take a little bit of rivet over that so yeah uh, but then um, for me the creative side is i think you know Kristen is actually the, the real creative in, in the family. She's a trained photographer, professional by trade. And um, so uh, I, I, I love that we can kind of complement each other and, you know, doing that as well. So she's very much an instrumental part of, of Mountain Road Ride and the videos that we produce. And uh, a lot of behind the scenes stuff is also done by her. And so uh, I think, you know, that kind of balance between the analytical business side and then also the creative side. At, uh, it's I was something that... I was watching one of your videos earlier today, and it was the one from down um, in Floyd, Virginia. Uh -huh. And it looked like it was kind of a miserable day. Oh, yeah. and, and, and you encountered her at the wooden bridge. 
That's and, right. Yeah. And I think you actually said to talking to the cameras like really hard to get back on the bike in, in something like this when you've just encountered somebody that you love. <laughs> you couldn't get rid of the car. So uh, so yeah. she's obviously a big part of the channel too. But doesn't she also have um, her own little mountain road channel yeah. on YouTube or something? Exactly. So we split up the content on our, on our, on our web page. The main page is mountainroad.com, but um, we kind of focus it on two, two sides, mountain road ride. That's obviously all the gravel cycling related stuff on my end. And then on Kristen's side, she focuses on the natural living, um, non-toxic lifestyle and gardening, cooking. That's her passions in life. So when, when, when I'm not riding um, or actually my, let's say, say this, you know, my, payback for all the services she gives and help out with the, out my side of the channel i've got to go build some garden boxes and so i don't mean like so, that. i don't mean to cut you <laughs> off that's up my alley too but we are noticing or i am noticing your house plants in the background uh. and my <laughs> husband has um a small forest on our kitchen table all over the, the house, house but a lot on the table <laughs> <laughs> well great i love it um well I'm not the blonde person. That's definitely Kristen's side, and that little lemon tree over there is what she keeps on life. So, uh, yeah, that's that's her passion. <laughs> so, um, what what sparked your interest in gravel cycling beyond you know what you're doing? Uh, we all, as a kids, you know, you get out and you ride your bikes, but mm -hmm. you know, in in the world of gravel. So, kind of what sparked your interest in in gravel cycling? Yeah, I think it, it ties back to my connection with South Africa because, as I mentioned earlier, you know, I lived in this small town and you know the dirt roads they were um, quite extensive as well and the ability to go on both paved and off-road um, and, and in South Africa the mountain biking scene is, is pretty huge I mean you Ooh. have world-class events like the Cape Epic out there um, and uh, so after a couple of years of road cycling I also got into mountain biking tried my hand at um, cross-country mountain biking and uh, then when I discovered gravel only after moving to the US, I was like, this is this is the mm. perfect combination of both those disciplines. I get to exercise my endurance capabilities from the road, but I can use all my technical skills that I picked up on the mountain biking side because a lot of these gravel roads, they, they do require, you know, good bike oh, yeah. handling yeah. skills as well. And so being able to, to combine those two, uh, it was just a perfect combination for me of, of both. But I, I think I also want to just tie in with my, my connection with the finance world, because um, I think this is something that I want to do with the channel is I, I feel like I can relate to that sort of 95 person who works in the corporate world, you know, who's sort of stuck behind a screen all day. Mm. And uh, that, that was me, you know, building Excel spreadsheets and financial reports and all those sort of things. And for me, I needed kind of a bit of escape. I, I, I wanted more. I wanted to be outside. I am an outdoor kind of person. And so it almost felt like a part of me was always, oh, you know, lacking or dying when, when I'm just sitting in front of a computer. Mm -hmm. And and when I discovered gravel, it was also just the ability to get out there and explore and see the world and see all the beautiful natural surroundings. And that instantly, you know, that got me hooked. And once I, I was on the first couple of gravel rides, it's like, uh, this is just amazing. And, that, that and the places we can go. <laughs> that comes through in your videos. You're, it's, it, you really do communicate well Yeah, how the environment that we get to ride our bikes in is just so amazing. It was it was fun. We played, um, before I left my shop, we were playing your videos, and we I was showing them the unpaved one, and just it really brought them into it, like yeah. all my staff members. It yeah. was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually... Um, showed your video to my wife and my mother-in-law and i was like you guys want to know what i did this weekend yeah. look at this check out this and, one <laughs> and we sat there and ate dinner and and watched your video and they were just you know it was like it was really cool it was it was really do yeah. you do a good job a great job of storytelling the event as a ride i i, I think in it it's it's i'm a little jealous you do you just do a really good job a great Thank you. job no, i really appreciate this feedback i mean and it's it's feedback like this I, I get a couple of comments like this on the videos as well and and what i always write back is like this this is kind of feedback that that motivates me to get out there and want to make more and yeah. uh i i feel like i i want to share my passion uh, this is my passion and then something i'm I, I really enjoy doing and the spin-off hopefully from that is that it'll inspire other people to get out there. And mm. that, that's sort of 
my biggest goal with these videos is just to to inspire the community to get out there no matter your fitness level no matter your access to to riding opportunities you can get out there and, and even in your neighborhood you know there's always places to explore new new ways to go and ride and yeah. uh that that for me is is, yeah. is the end result and uh yeah I, I get great joy out of hearing stories like this so thank you <laughs> so I, I always ask this question when we have guests on and and it's it's interesting how in line the responses all, always are, and I'd love to get your 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 take on this. What's your personal take on the current popularity of of gravel cycling as a discipline? Yeah, and no, I love it. I, I mean, I just love seeing this this what started off as this grassroots movement is just you know exploding and it's growing, and um, I think it creates a, an excitement for people to want to be a part of it um, as they see it growing and gaining more traction and popularity within the media um, channels at, it, it one, you know, it, it just connects with people and it gives them the opportunity to get outside. And like, like I said, you know, if we ultimately inspire people to get outdoors mm. and just break away from computer screens for a while and go and ride their bike, that's, that's awesome. So uh, I don't, I don't care, you know, if there's all this other, you know, drama around, you know, should it be still in its infancy and uh, kept at a smaller scale? If it gets people on bikes, then that's, that's awesome. More butts on bikes, more butts on bikes. Speaking of bikes, what bikes do you have in your stable? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, no, this is my topic. I I love uh, nerding out on some bikes. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So yeah, I, I currently have my gravel bike. That's the, um, the three T Explorer that you see in, in, in most of my, my gravel ride videos. Um, That is sort of my go-to right now. Um, Love that bike. Just so versatile. Um, Run it with the 700 C wheels, run it with 650 B wheels, and you can just pretty much take it anywhere. Um, and then my trusty old road bike, the good steed, you know, it's been uh, with me since 2014. So it's a track to money. Um, and that is just mostly set up as my, my road bike. But uh, I, I've also done a video on the channel actually um, to convert an old uh, rim brake road bike hmm. to something that's, I would call it light duty gravel riding. Um, uh, and I've taken that bike out with some, Panaracer Gravel King tires in the 26 millimeter version. Mm-hmm. Um, and that can go on gravel. If you, if you're careful and you pick your lines, uh, you can, you can actually get away with an old school road bike on, on gravel as well. So sometimes I like to, you know, push the limits on that. <laughs> Especially like on the towpath. On the towpath. Yeah. That's can, perfect for the yeah. towpath. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Uh, your, your video catalog. Now, now people who haven't seen your channel, um, hopefully after they've, they've, you know, listened to us, that's the first thing they're going to do is they're going to jump over and start digging through your catalog. Your catalog is pretty doggone deep. How long have you been producing videos and, and how many of them have you done? Yeah. Yeah. No. So it started with Chris and I, um, back in 2018, I believe. Um, and, uh, we, we first used the, the one channel, um, jointly, and we try to split our content, but we realized that, you know, we want to focus on both our passions separately, um, and just kind of build that niche. So she, she split off, started doing the mountain road ride video, uh, mountain road live videos. And with me, you know, I kept on with the ride stuff. So in total, we've got about 120 ish videos right now. Um, so it's, wow. it's grown nicely over the years. Um, and then since starting with the gravel ride of the week, that playlist is, 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 being continuously being added to um and so we're currently on 32 i think i was gonna ask you how many many are in there so that that that's sort of the piece that kind of like got my attention and and really because i was looking at the names of your videos it was like unpaved yep that's one in our backyard gravista that's one in our backyard down in floyd that's one in our backyard dirty Hmm. kitten one you know it just was on and on and over and over and over again it was kind of like uh it was really cool the familiarity um of what we have here and and with those rides being in our backyard yeah so but of, i think you can agree we we're so spoiled for for the the riding opportunities that we've got here in virginia um mm-hmm. and and just the places we can ride we've got the shenandoahs we've got the the blue ridge mountains um 
we've got closer to you know dc we've got the tow path we've got people who want to be on just pavement we've got the w and od path right here with us um and then just the vast expand the network of gravel roads throughout virginia mm-hmm. that's only virginia and never mind uh, maryland and pennsylvania all these other states that are close by as well so um I think we, we see so much media on the West and, you know, Colorado and, and, and some of those other mm-hmm. uh, Utah and, and, and some of those sort of Midwest uh, gravel races happening. But we've got a ton in our backyard and we're kind of spoiled for choice. And we do need to protect them, though. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. there's there's lots of motion and movement to introduce pavement onto some of those right out in Loudoun County. And I, I think we do need to to make sure we're we're making our voices known. Maybe we should go protest Congress. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy, that's on the internet now. <laughs> um, out of all the videos that you've done, which one's your favorite? Oh, that's such a difficult question. Uh, I, I I hate to like pinpoint one because for me, you know, each each has like a a specific category that I like mm-hmm. to put it in. So I think of, you know, if you want to think of like great winter type riding, that was Gravelocity. Um, if you want to think of like epic weather conditions, that was the recent Unpaved. And mm-hmm. you alluded to the Tour de Dirt earlier as well. So those were two like really muddy, messy races, really challenging from that standpoint and extremely challenging in terms of elevation. That was Gravista, flat out. I, you know, yeah. I those Blue Ridge Mountains, serious serious elevation in there um but but one that i will kind of uh, sort of highlight and i think you know they put such a attention to detail on this on this race um and that's alex and chris with their um mm-hmm. dirty kitten events um mm-hmm. i know they've been on your podcast before and uh i you know i i, I love connecting with them whenever i get up get opportunity at these events um so I did both their uh, Grally Cat event, which is in, in the springtime, and then the gra- gravel race. Um, and I must say that Grally Cat was that was something special. That was something unique because it wasn't your traditional race. It was more of a sort of scavenger hunt kind of thing, and you mm-hmm. racing from checkpoint to checkpoint and collecting cars and then taking yeah. it to another checkpoint. And it's just a totally different format. And, and I said in that video as well, I don't think I've had this much fun since I've been a kid because you could <laughs> wow. you could build your own own course you you know you weren't stuck to like this is the route profile that you've got to follow you could cut short the route if you wanted to and follow your own direction and go and explore a new part of the property if you wanted to so that was the sort of a standout for me and just being something different something unique and they also mm-hmm. put so much attention to detail into that event um that you know it, it, it stands out as, as as something that was something something special on the calendar we um are are you gonna are you gonna do their um uh, the Dirty Kitten Winter Training Series that they do uh, in so, January? Uh, so I was rolled in, in for that in the year before, so mm-hmm. this year um, from January to March. But I'm looking into that again because there's always a nice yeah. way to com- connect with with their group, and they've got quite an extensive community that oh, yeah. that they uh, follow. And uh, so yeah, that's always nice because they got their indoor training rides normally on Zwift, and you can get on those community rides. Um, so that's that's fun. I, yeah, I really is. enjoyed that. Yeah. yeah um so what about a favorite ride not a favorite video but a favorite ride yeah uh, <laughs> again a hard one uh, but falls. i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna go with with that girly cat again you know yeah. that that was for me a ride that stands out um as as one that uh, I, I would put as my highlight for the uh have you and chris ever compared spreadsheets because you know chris <laughs> is a very big spreadsheet guy himself. <laughs> I, I i didn't know that but i know oh, he's yeah. so good at with you know the back end computer stuff and 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 their coding yeah. that even goes into their winter training program because mm-hmm. that's what made it so fun they you know he built this whole leaderboard and yeah. all your your ride metrics just filter in there and you can compete with everybody so uh, i i have no doubt that he's good with with, with oh, excel yeah. as well so we'll, we'll have to c- connect and, uh, at some time <laughs> all right let, let's switch gears for just a minute and let's talk tech I want to yeah. talk about the cameras that you use and the setup and the mounts that you use. This is what use. I want to talk about, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, let's dive into that. I know you, you How probably... long a ride actually is because you're filming. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cameras. Which cameras and mounts? Let's start there. Okay. Um, so for me, the GoPros are the go-to. Um, I know there are other action sport cameras out there, but in terms of stabilization, GoPros just stand out so so much. Um, so I have two of them, um, both the Euro 7 and then the Euro 9. 
Um, I particularly like the seven. I think if I could pick again, um, I, I would, instead of buying the nine, I would buy the eight, just purely for the form factor. Um, the, the, the seven and the eight, they're smaller, they're lighter. Um, and so uh, if you've seen my Rockdown Rambler video, um, then you'll know that I, I like to ride with one of the cameras on my wrist. Um, and in that particular event, one of the <laughs> cameras actually fell off the wrist um, and I had to run back and go and get it. Let the, like a whole Chris Froome style running up the mountain um, without my bike to go and get my camera. Um, but so uh, I like the 7 because it's like you can, mm. you know, pretty much move around with that camera a lot. And then the, the Euro 9, that one is pretty good for, for photos as well. So whenever I'm out mm. on rides and there's opportunity to take good photos, then, then I like to use that. Um, and then the other sort of camera that, that goes along with all everything that we do is the one that Kristen uses because um, a lot of the shots that we get isn't just from the ride it's sort of from the sidelines as well and uh, she she really works hard behind the scenes to maybe drive out on the course and find a particular spot and capture more of the creative shots low down or shallow bit the field or with a zoom lens or something like that um, and that's where you know we we make use of a, a canon m50 so that's a, a sort of more of a vlogging video that we vlogging um camera that we have that uh, also gets used for for those rides um i'm an m50 but, but, guy too i got an m50 so I, I, okay that's a nice little camera sharp yeah very compact and you know it does its thing and reliable for us so we've, we've enjoyed that <laughs> i will say now i have a hero eight um it, it seems to be sort of like the stepchild there's lots of like things that work for for um, up to the seven, and then they've dropped the eight, and then they have like little you know extra market things that are work for the nine and the ten. That eight seems to be this weird little stepchild that sits in the middle, and it it's I like it. It's very good. Anything seven forward, the stabilization, like you said, mm -hmm. on point. Mm -hmm. uh, but that eight, I mean, it's a great little camera, but it just seems like there's things that just don't want to work for it. Yeah, so. yeah. And I stole your wrist mount, your your <laughs> wrist strap. I I actually went and googled that. I saw you wearing that thing, and I was like, uh -huh. I need to try that because I aspire sometimes to make videos, and Joey knows this, and. I struggle. I, you know, it's a little different, but I, I did a ride yesterday just for video work and I was like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> so much. Yeah. Cause Joe, you want to talk about it with the time it takes. Oh yeah. I've always understood that. And that's why half the time I'm like, screw it. I'm not, I mean, you got to go full in or nothing. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. 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 So, and like I had, I had aspirations to do stuff at unpaved. Me and, too. <laughs> and I, I worked so hard just to get so that. So props to on because I don't know how anyone did it as clean as you did it. And, and actually get that much video. I yeah. just I, I took it out a couple of times at the beginning of the day, and, and then it was like, oh, my God, I just need to ride my bike. <laughs> I just yeah. need to get from point A to point B. That, uh, that is a challenge, too, to keep on moving and get the shots. Because you know, like you say, you could get so stuck in just recording, and uh, then then before you know it, Hours have gone by. I'm like, oh shucks, I still got to finish this ride. <laughs> I, uh, I'm in the middle of nowhere, and uh, I, I'm just spending way too much time trying to get the shot from a river or whatever. Hey, uh, me hey, riding over a bridge. Hey, um, you're a tip of the spear guy too. I see you up there riding with Jeremiah. I, I see that, and, yeah. and you know, Joey. And I, well, I'm gonna speak for myself. I'm not even a mid pack guy. I'm a party pack guy. Oh, it's we are definitely like, look pack. at our numbers at just unpaved. Yeah. <laughs> We are the caboose. Uh, so that's that's tough to do all that filming and actually stay up there in the front too. So bravo for that. Uh, what's what's your creative process look like? Uh, so do you do you do you do you shoot video sort of with a specific vision in mind, or you just sort of let the cameras roll and then let the story unfold in post? Yeah, no, that's that definitely the latter um, because. As much as you like to plan, um, gravel riding is just too too uncertain. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you never know what the road is going to look like and what's going to happen if your camera is going to fall off your wrist <laughs> and you got to go back and get it. Um, so definitely just, you know, I a lot of the times I get lucky with these shots as well. And so, yeah, I do have that wrist mount and I like to, you know, get shots as best as possible. But a lot of times, to be honest, I'm just sticking it in a direction and hoping that I've got somebody <laughs> framed in that shot, you know, um, because I'm trying my best to keep my eye on the road and not crash. And that's also something I, I, I do want to mention is now, I, I, for the most part, I 
try to you know at least do it in a safe manner i think you know mm -hmm. my yeah. wife always sends me out the door with three rules when i go and ride it's like be safe have fun take photos and i do it in that order as well so i, I want to be safe and i don't want to first of all put myself at risk and also those people around me at risk you know by getting a weird shot of trying to be all creative and then causing a crash so yeah. um, most of the time if i get a shot I'm lucky and I'm, I'm just thankful that I framed somebody in the shot while, you know, keeping a good line and staying safe. And um, so definitely, you know, just go out on a day, have fun and record it as it happens, because, you know, that that's I feel like really captures the the essence of the story so much yeah. better than than trying to script it or, or force it into a direction like this. Maybe sometimes I'll have like a creative idea for a intro that i that i want to maybe do like I, I did like a funky 80s intro with one of the <laughs> the, the the dirty kitten um rides so that was sort of pre-planned because i had like this song in my head but uh other than that you know you gotta let the story tell itself um yeah. because it's 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 never going to be the same every every ride is different and the terrain is so unpredictable and um so you can plan and then let let the let the story tell and everybody's view of a ride and everybody's experience on a ride is different. And I, and I think that's one of the things my, my takeaways from the world of gravel is that post ride community, because you can get together a campfire and everybody's got a different version of the story that they, mm -hmm. of their ride. They're all different. They're all unique. Like my experience at the unpaved is different than Joey's is different than yours is drastically different than Jess's who made up her own adventure. <laughs> 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 Hers came out to 67 miles somehow. And she made a new I plugged route. In, yep, yep, she made she a just, new route. Yep. <laughs> Exploring uh, Pennsylvania gravel roads. I love it. That's, and doing it twice. Do. It was just looping an area I knew twice. It was this, and Dave had a very well marked course because every time I took a turn, it said wrong way, wrong way. So. <laughs> So what kind of plans have you got for, for next year? You, I, I'm assuming you're already starting to make some plans for next year. What kind of plans you got? Yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely drawing up my calendar. I started a couple of weeks ago. And uh, so what I, what I do want to do is explore some more. I think, you know, now that the, the, the bug has sort of bitten me this year, exploring a lot of the mid Atlantic stuff. Um, I mentioned earlier, you know, there's other races, obviously in other oh, parts yeah. of the country as well. And yeah. I would love to, if the opportunity is there, you know, maybe travel out west, go and see a race in, in either, you know, Colorado or perhaps, you know, California somewhere. Uh, I definitely, I would love to do a Vermont race. Um, I've had a, a few comments on the channel um, and Instagram, like you got to come up here, got to come and do this race. Yes. Um, so if, rooted. Uh, either rooted or Vermont overland or something like that. Both. I would love to, to go and, and try one of those Vermont races as well. Have, um, have you put in the lottery for a rooted? I'm pardon? Have you put in for the rooted lottery yet? I know that it's open. I okay. I need to I need to move. I, I think uh, it closes the fifteenth. Okay, Ooh. yeah. So that's for everyone here because I need to do it tonight. Are you uh, wait? All you four of it? us. I'll I'll do it. When is it? End of July. End of July. Oh, well, Sugarfoot. That's my Empire State ride. Yeah. Well, that's sucks my, to suck. My work. Well, you never Me know what behind, the dates. We're, go, we're gonna go up. <sighs> Joey, always anyway, sorry. Behind. That's okay. That's all right. It's fine. <laughs> so we've got a little group that's forming for Gravel Worlds after we talked to Jason. Jason got us all excited about Gravel Worlds. I've actually already got my Airbnb lined up, and I can't even register yet, and I've already got my place to stay. <laughs> so um, what event next year has got the most stoke going for you? Oh, I, I'm looking forward to to do a bit more bike packing as well. So oh, one of the go. videos that I did was um, the Trans Virginia. And so that one, I, I only went from um, DC to Harrisonburg, obviously not their full route, because that obviously extends all the way down mm -hmm. into Damascus. Um, so what I figured is since I've done kind of the first part into Harrisonburg, um, the Virginia Endurance Series, they've got their rock star gravel mm -hmm. route. Um, and uh, so Rob Ism and, and his team, they have that awesome gravel road. There's both the trail and then the gravel version. So I, I think I'll go with the gravel. And that one runs from Harrisonburg all the way down to Roanoke. So expanding basically further south, the part that I missed with the 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 trans virginia so uh, that's that's one that I'm, I'm i'm pretty excited about i think it'll be a, a multi-day thing for me i'm not one of those 
or at least not there yet, but one of those ultra endurance races that will go through the night and try and, you know, see if they can set a three day course in one day. <laughs> I can't do that sort of things. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to the Rockstar Gravel. I think they're, um, they sort of grand depart for, for that one is around April, end of April. So um, I think that's something I'm going to, I'm going to work towards. You should um, check out Crotan Buck 50. Uh, Matt's doing something pretty cool with a whole long weekend approach where it's a, a bike packing, not race, but sort of adventure component on the front end of the race. So it's a, a 75 out to do a bike packing trip and then a 75 back and then you camp again. And then you get up the next day and you actually ride the race. So oh, it's, oh, okay. it's kind of a three day <laughs> shindig. And, uh, at, that's... That, that one, it, that one is on my list. I, I must say that the crow 10 is, is, it's on my calendar. So, uh, I I've got it on my radar, but I, I didn't know about the bikepacking version of it. So that's, yeah. that's pretty yeah. neat. Yeah. I think, I think the way that Matt's running that is you, you register for the, the ride. So you're, you're going to do the race. You're either going to do the, the 50 the 100 or the the buck 50 the full buck 50 yep. and then once you're registered you can submit to him because he's kind of keeping his numbers tight on the bike packing side mm-hmm. um you submit sort of an application and say this is who i am this is what i'm doing this is why i'd like to do it and you know then he's going to go through this process of of picking people and working that out so that he's it, it's a precursor i think what matt is doing is he's testing the waters for a big excel version of croatan mm-hmm. So it's that front end of that. I've put in my, uh, my name into the, to the pick for the, for the little long weekend excursion. I might mm. regret that later on, but if you've never ridden down in Croatan, it's absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely amazing. Flat, 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 sandy, okay. sandy, sandy. Uh, but as we all know, flat, flat, flat doesn't always mean easy, easy, easy. That means mm. pedal, pedal, pedal is what it comes down <laughs> yeah. to. So, so yeah. where can people find your YouTube channel? I'm going to put links in the show notes, but I want you to make sure to shout it out here. Oh yeah, no, thank you. So if, if they go and search on YouTube and they look for mountain road ride, um, I know the word mountain road can be a little generic. So if you add that ride part of it, you'll definitely find it. Um, and on the channel, you know, everything that we spoke about specifically the gravel ride of the week, but there's some indoor training tips there's some reviews on there um of bike related products so i'm pretty sure people will find something that they enjoy on the channel well like i said earlier the catalog is deep you will find something that you enjoy and if you're in the mid-atlantic and you're thinking about doing a ride there's a really good chance that beyond's already been there on mountain road ride (laughs) yeah you can go check it out and decide whether it's something you really want to do or not (laughs) see that that was the other reason you know you asked earlier about the the motive for putting some of these videos together because that's the other thing you know don't see a lot of like when you want to do your research on these on these rides yeah there's the photos but the photographers are mostly mostly based in the most scenic spots so they don't show you the surface level of all those those uh different offshoots and difficult trails and stuff and you're always left wondering like okay, what tire choice do i pick you know, for this mm-hmm. type of ride so hopefully my my rides and the videos can also then uh kind of help people pick their equipment um, a little bit better. There was one that I was looking at, Alpine Grand Fondo, I think you'd done. or Al- was mm-hmm. it? Yeah, and, and it was like, I kept looking at that going, this feels like it's mostly a road ride. And yeah. how it kind of like, dipped over into the gravel world it was it was and and so for that very reason alone i i think you hit the nail on the head it's like okay what exactly should be my my gear selection or my choices so um and where else can they find uh, uh information about all the other mess around and things that you do instagram website all that yeah so uh our, our website first of all that's uh, mountain-road.com um and then uh the instagram handle is mtn road ride um okay. and uh, yeah they'll they'll find uh, all the photos that i take you know with my <laughs> my euro nine <laughs> as, uh, as i'm out on my rides <laughs> and I, i'm gonna put links in the show notes folks so if you're you're looking for that um and you don't know how to use google um then you can just pop into the show notes and click that link hey thank you very much behan for joining us tonight this is a lot of fun yeah I'm, thank you i'm really glad we we were able to connect and um excited to have you here i'm glad i can now choose the tires that i will take on my next bike ride (laughs) 
<laughs> and I good. say that because I have no idea what tires I run normally on bike rides. So, so are you going to be now giving us all I'm guidance? Gonna, well, I'm actually just going to CC Joey and be like, so Joey, you may want to watch this video on what bike I should ride. Hey, Bihan, at the end of these things, we always do our little this or that. Um, we always invite our guests to join us. And I'm going to ask you to do the same. And I'm not going to give you the opportunity to say no. So we're going to jump right. right into I'm that. In. I'm in. <laughs> we're going to take two things, throw them up against each other. And you can... Give an answer, and you can explain yourself if you choose to, but you don't have to. But that's where all the fun comes in anyway. So mm -hmm. um, I'm going to toss it over to you first, Behan, then Jess. Got it. Then I'm going to answer, and then I'm going to give Joey the, the opportunity to bring it all home. Does that sound good, Joey? You like that? Making sure you're on board. Okay. That was a salute. First <laughs> item up on this week's This or That, would you rather have a socially distanced, masked Philly Bike Expo or no Philly Bike Expo? <laughs> that, that's an easy one. I'll, I'll go for the first one. And uh, um, uh, off camera, we, we, we chatted about that. And you know, we were all there for the Philly Bike Expo. And uh, what an awesome experience to, yeah. to go. So uh, I will definitely take you know, any kind of cautionary measures that you have to, to follow, you know, to at least be able to see awesome bikes in yeah. person. So definitely. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm going to say the same thing. Um, I teach in mask all day. Um, I usually actually I drink so much during the day that my mask is constantly down because, you know, I'm hydrating. I'm drinking my one or so two So what coffees. are you drinking? Alcohol? No. <laughs> I will take a mask. It was a very great event. It was great to be there. It was great to meet other people. So I 100% would do it again. So, yeah, absolutely. I And I kind of threw this one in there because I wanted to give them some props and to give everybody that was there props. You know, I never saw any like, oh, I don't want to wear a mask or it's just it was like it was the normal thing. And it was really cool. And it was so exciting to actually, like Beyonce said, be able to see these really cool bikes yeah. and get together and see friends, meet new friends and mm -hmm. all that good stuff. Joey? <laughs> it felt nice. <laughs> yeah, it did. Unpaved was, I think, my first big thing with COVID, I guess. Mm -hmm. We were outside. It was a shindig. It was cold, wet, rainy. Um, but to be indoors with everyone, mask or no mask, um, obviously mask. Yeah, no one made a big stink out of it. It just felt yeah. normal. Yeah, it was um, great. It's, it's absolutely great. I also couldn't smell the weird smells from cyclists that you're used <laughs> to smelling, whether it be <laughs> some devil's lettuce, mostly BO, <laughs> I just rode in, um, you know, all that stuff. So... I love it. Yeah. Loved it. Uh, second item on this or that this week, boa closures on your shoes or lace them up? Whew. Uh, I I don't have either on both of my shoes. Oh. <laughs> both my road and my mountain bike shoes. So you, are, quali are you, you just... qualify to make a long-term review then on boa closures yeah. according to our standards. <laughs> yeah. The only place I have a boa connection is on my, my saddlebag, actually. I've got the Silka yeah. saddlebag, yeah. and it's got like one of those dials. But uh, other than that, I'm a Velcro guy. <laughs> Jeff? Um, I hate the sound of Velcro. It skeeves me out. It makes me like, like <laughs> it, it's like... Um, but I have boa shoes and I absolutely love them. Um, I think I'd be too lazy to tie shoelaces. So the <laughs> boas are very good for me. Okay. I have a little boa pet peeve. So I love boa closures. You know that. But I have my RX-8. They're the, bo the boas that you just pull out and they loosen. And then my torches, you have to twist them backwards. Yeah, that's how and, mine are. And my gimpy fingers... I have a real hard time actually getting them to go backwards. And I don't know if it's me or the boa. I just, go, it's you. I just <laughs> go with it. It's me. Yeah. I just like to be able to reach down and pop them and, and let them go and just open them up. So, but I do prefer boa closures over laces because I, I have this irrational fear that my laces are going to get gummed up in the drive train. Oh, yeah. Go, Joey. <laughs> um, that's tough. Hmm? I like it. I have a pair of lace-up recons, and I have a pair of just regular S-Works, too. Mm -hmm. With boas, I have one of each. The lazy side of me likes the boas. Mm -hmm. The cool comfort side, I like lacing them up. It's like yeah, my fourth pair of lace-up shoes. Yeah, because it's like, you know, you have that opportunity to sort of like adjust to that. You can do that with the boas, too. But, yeah, like the uh, S-Works boas, they have that nice Swiss style, like watch kind of. 
Mine is super sweet. Yeah, so we have the same so pair even, of shoes of those. Even though boas have this whole lifetime thing, and I've actually had to get repair kits for my boas, yeah. you will cuss them all day long when you're getting ready to do a ride, or especially if it's in a big event, and that boa snaps, and you don't have the repair Yeah, I can yet. do anything for a shoelace. That's, that's So I like the shoelace on my S-Work shoes versus my... I like my RX-8s, but I love that nice metal... Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you never know. But okay. in my triathlon days, I oh, did have geez. Velcro shoes. So just <laughs> saying that. Speaking of which, third <laughs> item on this week's this or that, unpaved on a single speed or run a triathlon. <laughs> it's actually do a triathlon. Do a triathlon. Because you I'm don't sorry. really okay, run don't in a third of the triathlon. I don't know. <laughs> Behan. Well, uh, I, I have a lot of triathlons in my in my history as well. So, so Jess, I'm with you on that one. I actually my my road shoes are still my triathlon shoes. It's just the single strap that goes over. It's my my quick you know release shoes. I can get out of them with one one strap. That's it, you know. So, uh, <laughs> um, no, definitely. I'll, I've I've shifted a lot over the years. I've, I've moved a lot of, um, away from my triathlon days for now. You know, even though my background is in running and I don't really call myself a swimmer. That was always my my weakest discipline. But uh, nowadays, I'm a pure cyclist. So I've never done a single speed ride. So I wouldn't even know how that feels. Um, but I, I'll pick that. I think you know that'll be a nice challenge. Maybe for a future video, I need to I need to uh, throw out my first gravel ride of the week that's on a single speed. <laughs> nice. There we go. Jess. You already answered. Did you answer? I no, didn't answer, answer. But see, this is the thing because I didn't do like the difference and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I could have handled my 60 mile ride on a single speed. Okay. You know, it was hilly, but not as much as I was like huffing and puffing. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't anything I would need to unclip and white, like white walk up. So um, I would. But triathlons are kind of nice. I'm going to say do a triathlon. <laughs> okay. I'm going to this the last one and this one i applaud you jeff you, you jess you came up with some fantastic this or that's this week because i put out the call and i said i need this or that so, i got it I and got you responded it. um i have to earn my keep here so i would i would like a point of order though i need to clarify a question clarify yeah, clarify um do you need to finish unpaved or a single speed or just start no unpaved? you have to finish unpaved on a single speed like they will not like you have oh, to finish Lord. like dave is gonna say like nope you still have to come like you there's it's still safe will there be snacks for like three days yeah, will, be, no. will, will, will tanya be at the ranch for like probably, three days probably <laughs> Because otherwise, I'm not so sure. Um, I I would do anything rather than than do a triathlon again. Even though <laughs> yeah, I am a swimmer, I just can't run. It's it's miserable. I I actually did a few a You're few a great years swimmer. Ago. Yeah, I I've always loved to swim. I've always been a swimmer, and I know it's like well. well people at the pool would always be like what are you training for i'm like i'm not training or anything i'm training not to have a heart attack is what i'm training for ultimately so it's great for your body yeah it's so great and 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 somebody got in my ear and said let's do it just do triathlon you should try a triathlon and i did and it was all right it was it was okay i'm glad i did them um and and so i have that experience but joey says triathlons <sighs> are like middle school yeah you have to try them you have to get through them but you gotta find yourself. You just gotta to get find out of it. yourself uh, in order. Uh, you know. So there we go. So go I, ahead, Joey. I will. I would literally do the, the anything other than a triathlon, Joey. I don't have to answer this one. <laughs> I think everyone knows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Joey would not do a triathlon. Is it this whole running thing? It's like it's everything. All all of the everything. Rest of it. Okay. Last item on this or that: biscuits or cornbread. Hmm. I'll take biscuits. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going biscuits too. I'm not a huge cornbread fan. It's not no? like, ooh, look, there's cornbread. Yum. I'm so excited. You know, like no, a good cornbread. A good cornbread that's kind of like sweet. Like with barbecue. Like absolutely yeah. that's good. Moist, but... So many times people come up with the cornbread. It's like, oh, it looks good. And then you pop it open and it's like sandpaper. It's all dry mm. and nasty. Nah. I, I don't get like personally excited for cornbread. You can always pour a bunch of gravy over top of biscuit. And so I'm for that reason alone, I too am gonna go with biscuit, Joey. I think this has been to this or that. No. Um, maybe for the fishing podcast, but I love a good cornbread. I, I do love a good biscuit too, but my dad like my dad will just make box jiff mm -hmm. jiffy 
in cast iron and put some, sh- I don't know what he puts in it with it, but I could just eat the whole thing. See, now I-, I don't like like a creamy one, and I don't like it with like chunks of corn either. Mm. Uh, just, I-, I love cornbread I- and a vanilla Coke. I didn't know for the longest time, because you know, my family, we come from North Carolina, I didn't know for the longest time that cornbread wasn't just this flat, like stuff that was fried. Yeah, in a it's pan. a nice fluffy. But all of a sudden, cornbread went from being this like little little hard tack thing. Is this because to someone like made cake? cornbread for the club party and you didn't like it? No, did somebody make cornbread? That's all there. I was afraid to eat it. I didn't. I didn't have any. I didn't even see it. I would have tried. Uh, I would have sampled. Cracker Barrel has very dry cornbread. I like their biscuits. <laughs> I like their biscuits though. We behind sorry, we do random. We we get off on I get we're talking about food. <laughs> My bedtime is in 11 minutes, so... (laughs) Oh, easy. Okay. Anybody else have anything before we shut this thing down? No? No, No? I think we're good. Thanks for coming on. No, I I love Philly. It was nice seeing everyone. It's nice seeing you, honey. Thanks. And Vihan, thank you for joining us tonight. It's been a great conversation. I look forward to doing it again. And and maybe next time we're at an event, we'll have the opportunity to sit down next to a fire together. That'd be awesome too. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate being on the podcast. And uh, yeah, thank you for 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 watching the videos. That's first and foremost the biggest support that people can give the channels. Just you know, uh, watching the videos. I, I love the feedback. And so uh, yeah, if it inspires people to get out there. I'll keep on doing it. <laughs> cool. Thanks, everybody, for listening to this episode of Mid-Atlantic Gravel, Travel, and Dirt. This is a listener-supported podcast by some pretty amazing people on Patreon and PayPal. You can go to the website and find out some more about that at... Uh, what's the website address, Joey? Are we talking about us now? Yeah. All right. Sorry, I was thinking of... Uh, That's okay. Yeah. Uh, gravel, travel, dirt.com. So I'm a little like it's, I got like four things going on in my head right I now. Know. You're probably over there doing uh, ordering and our yeah. Instagram, which uh, we have been mm-hmm. more active on, is mm-hmm. at Mid Atlantic GTD. Our Wookie contest is over. I am waiting to hear from um, our the judge, a judge, to see who had the best uh, Wookie impersonation. Uh, have we heard anything from the Wookie judge? No, the Wookie judge is dead to me. The Wookie judge is silent. Oh, well, yep. that's just the way it is. Mid Atlantic Gravel Travel and Dirt is recorded this week from right here in Joey's Kitchen, all the way out to Great Falls in Northern Virginia. Thanks for riding along. Until next time, do good, be nice, go slow, and respect others. Love you. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Have a great night. Love you. Bye. Bye. Love you. Bye. Sorry. Good grief. Good grief.